All right, so blog post number five um, in light of Macbeth. Uh, so I decided to do a video blog this time. Normally I haven't done this. Um, and this is kind of because I eavesdropped on Miss G. Um, and she mentioned that Tommy had done a video blog. And I asked him about it, and he said it was, uh, it was a cool thing to do. Um, thought it was thought it was a pretty interesting way to go about it. Um, and I thought, you know, because we were um, doing a, um, we had to sketch um, a work of art, um, I figured this would be a good way to show that work of art um, and kind of talk about some of the things on it. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, this computer's kind of old, the webcam is kind of iffy, so um, we'll see if it lags or not, hopefully not. Um, by just going up, uh, going through it, kind of explaining what the work of art is um, and, and what I chose. Uh, so, I'll just show you right here. Um, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, not the best artist. Um, took quite a while. Uh, but this is the armor garniture um, uh, that is presumed to have been made for Henry VIII um, of England, King of England, from 1509 to 1547. Um, and, uh, it was made, or was designed, um, by Hans Holbein, uh, the Younger. He was a Swiss, um, like, armor designer, um, and he was working for Henry VIII from 1526 to 1528, so only, like, two years. Um, but, uh, this specific, uh, work was made, uh, in 1527, uh, and it's made out of steel, gold, uh, leather, uh, different copper alloys. Um, it's 73 inches tall, which is roughly six feet. Um, and it weighed 62 pounds. Um, and so Hans Holbein, uh, like I said, he worked for uh, King Henry VIII. Um, and it's it's assumed that this, or it's, it's pretty well known, that this particular uh, piece of armor was made uh, in the Royal Workshops at Greenwich, um, which is like a town uh, in southeastern England. And at, at this time, it was like just outside of London. Um, and just a better view of it. Well, it was a town just outside of London. Um, and it was actually, normally London had been the like hub uh, of making armor in England. Uh, in, uh, and um, Henry VIII was actually the one who established the Royal Workshop in Greenwich, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, so now we got like the the overall kind of uh, description of it, uh, the finite details, I guess. Um, but now uh, kind of like going into what this um, piece of armor is kind of representing in a way, um, and this is kind of like the stuff that we can see um, at the surface. So um, like I said earlier, this is a, a piece of armor uh, that was made uh, uh, by uh, request of Henry VIII, um, and he made a like he had a bunch of pieces of armor made, and the whole reason he established uh, the Royal Workshop at Greenwich was to um, have armor made for himself and for members of his court. So this would be nobles, uh, just different people that um, that were in, in in the the English court at the time. Um, and uh, like an interesting thing about this is like these armors would not have been very cheap to make. You had to be high, like high level to um, to be able to pay someone like Hans Holbein, uh, some armor designer, to make this. Um, so it wasn't something that came came cheap. Uh, so the you wouldn't really think that like a king would have to fight all that much because he has like a whole bunch of people over him. So you wouldn't really, it wouldn't, that probably doesn't really make sense like initially um, that he would have this piece of armor. But um, the piece of armor was made for combat. So um, at the time, so this, just like kind of a, a perspective thing, this was made during uh, like kind of tail end of the Middle Ages, near the beginning of the Renaissance, um, like I said, 1527. So you still got a ways to go until the Renaissance starts. Um, but at, at this time, uh, Catholicism was the main religion uh, in in England, at this uh, Henry VIII hadn't established the Anglican Church yet. Um, he hadn't 
He didn't divorce uh, Catherine of Aragon yet. That happened in 1533. Um, so at this time, Catholicism was still the main religion in uh, England. Um, and uh, So really what was going on uh, is at Lent, they would have these big festivals. Um, and at these festivals, they would have tournaments. Um, so the night was still very prevalent um, today. I mean, it, it was gonna fa it, it would phased out more so as we get closer to the Rene to the Renaissance era. Um, but the, the night was still um, feudalism was still kind of in effect, uh, not totally, um, not as much as it had been earlier. Um, but feudalism was still in effect. Knights still were around, um, and so uh, so this armor obviously it's it's pretty obvious if you know much about history. Like this is. A piece like a, a piece of armor that a knight would wear, um, and uh, so like I said earlier, these would be used in tournaments. Uh, it'd be like lance, they'd uh, jousting battles, um, that kind of thing. Um, and so you can see kind of some things like right here we have, uh, wait, right there we have um, some spurs. So uh, spur, yeah, that, that's how the the rider, um, in this case we're assuming it's Henry the Eighth, um, would spur on his horses. Um, as they, as they were, as he was trying to fight or joust, um, whatever it be, um, and there's actually like a couple of interesting things, um, unique things that are kind of hard to see in this sketch, but you can see like different parts of the gauntlet. There's uh, like hooks, um, and then also in, in over here, on the breastplate, there's just different hooks, and those were special specialized um, things made specifically for jousting. So like they're a lance arrest, um, and like a lance holder, so that. It would be easier for the rider, to, the rider in this case, like I said, Henry VIII, to joust um, and to, to hopefully win. Um, so, really, these these um, jousting battles, I guess, they, in a way, they can be equated to uh, the Roman Colosseum, like the Roman Games. Um, it wasn't really as bloody of a thing, and it wasn't, I guess, um, I mean, necessarily to, to please uh, and placate the, the common people as much. Um, it was really a, a thing for the nobility. Um, there weren't really a lot of commoners who could participate in this, uh, um, and it was like it's a really big event. Um, uh, <clears throat> so uh, it's it really kind of just represents what was going on at the time. Um, the nobility um, was like the nobility had all the power, um, and they would they had so much money. That they could they could have these events, um, you know, not by a lot of people do it. They could have like these fights, um, and so jousting battles and what have you. So it's it's really um, that kind of is what it represents at the time. Um, but like in a, in a larger sense, um, it's it's really interesting to see uh, how complex um, this this piece of art is. Um, I wasn't able to really represent it that well in my drawing um but over here in the in the plate um like i said i couldn't really draw it very well um and it, i'm trying to represent here how worn the piece of art is because uh, a lot of rust and stuff um so you can't really cl cl see the images totally clearly but on here there was a very ornate um like i guess carving in uh, on the metal uh, design uh and that's part of part of the reason that they feel uh, that historians feel like this is was made specifically for Henry VIII because it's so ornate, it's so um, it's made so well, uh, and so like on that there there's like an elephant on there. Like I said, I can't really really show it really. Um, there's an art. There's a, an elephant, and there's a there's a whole bunch of like different people on it. People with, like evil faces and stuff. Um, and I think in a way it, it's a lot of the the armor at the time was made with uh, like Christian themes on it. Um, and I think this is kind of, does represent like the like, conquering of like paganism and stuff uh, that like Christianity was thought to, to bring. Um, <clears throat> and, and England was a uh, Christian nation at the time. Uh, Catholicism, like I said, was, was really prevalent. Christianity, Protestantism was coming a little later um, at this time, but Christianity is still um, represented in this uh, and so it's really uh, interesting to see um, just how complex it is uh, and as far as color goes um, like I said I didn't color it because um, I don't really think I could I could color it represent it fully but the whole thing um, is gold 
like the, the color is gold uh, other than like the areas that are kind of like have a lot of rust and stuff you can't really see that but the whole thing was gold um and that is to signify the nobility of the wearer so henry the eighth was the king the king um was arguably the wealthiest person in in the country so the king would have um, enough money like i said enough money to make this um, it shows uh, like the, the disparity in money or in wealth um, and also like we think of gold it's expensive so like gold when, when you'd see that you'd immediately assume okay this person that's wearing this armor is wealthy and, and seeing the, com the complexity on the, the breastplate complexity of the whole thing um, all the specializations you would say oh my like whoever made this had a lot of money um, that they could that they could hire someone uh, so skilled as Hans Holbein, Hans Holbein, to make this piece of uh, armor for them, um, and so, like the reason that the, that um, Hans uh, chose chose gold um, is because um, immediately it sticks out. Um, steel was most armors mainly steel. Um, gold was definitely used as well. Um, obviously, there, there's steel in this, but the gold really sticks out too. People when at this tournament, um, when they see the gold, they're like, okay, like this person, um, it, they stick out uh, in a way. Um, and like I said, a, like a lot of the different um, things you see on it, um, the, uh, the 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 um, here. Um, so if you look at this shoulder, it's different than this shoulder. Um, and that's because um, shoulder is used to uh, hold the lance, um, and also, um, I mean, a, a lot of the like the creation of this was made in, like in terms of functionality. Um, you wanted obviously you wanted to protect whoever's in it because um, typically like these battles weren't really made um, to be fatal. Uh, so and also this is the king, so you want to protect the king very well. Um, so that's why we have. Um, so much armor. You, you see the chain mail. So the chain mail would be underneath all of this. Um, we also have really thick um, steel plating, uh, and you don't want like a really long, uh, like I guess you call it skirt right here, um, because that would inhibit his ability to walk. Um, so you see that in there, um, and you see you see that the the gloves, um, or I guess the gauntlets. You have the gauntlets. Um, but you also like you can see the fingers um, if you look real closely right there, you can, you can still see the gloves, um, and that's so the king would be able to or the the rider would be able to hold their lance, hold their sword, um, and still be able to fight. Um, and really like the reason it isn't like compared to most armors like this isn't as bulky, um, and that's so it could be used in combat. Um, I don't know this this armor was ever actually used in real combat um, but it, it may have definitely seen some use in tournament um, in tournaments um, and then also we see uh, right here the, um, the face uh, those dots are kind of representing like obviously you don't you want the him to be able to breathe um, so you have that there but also that's how we would see um, and really, like, this is just representative of, like, what the knights were, like, kind of supposed to represent at the time, which is, like, um, it's, like, kind of, I don't know, I want to say, like, superhuman, but, like, in this armor, they were almost invincible in a way, um, and that kind of represents, like, specific, specifically the king, like, the king was this, like, super high up, um, they were thought to be, uh, you couldn't you couldn't touch them, uh, in a way, um, and we see that later on in Henry VIII's reign, where he is able to kind of manipulate the church and be like, "Hey, um, I'm gonna do what I want. Uh, forget like what the rules are of Christianity, uh, what the rules are of Catholicism. I'm gonna um, have an affair. I'm gonna then um, have a d divorce, and then." At the end, he puts himself at the height uh, in charge of the church. So, um, really, this what this represents is the power of the king, um, the power of the nobility in general, because 
knights were nobles. Um, it wasn't like, like you wouldn't see a commoner um, as a knight, uh, at least not in, in most cases. So the nobility, um, the power the nobility had, um, how the nobility was was impregnable in a way. Um, there was such a disparity in the wealth, um, in who had the power, um, in the feudalistic this feudalistic society that. Um, that's really what you see in this piece. Um, and like a, another important point in this uh, is really um, is uh, sorry, um, this is my train of thought. Um, another important part I is um, the values of the time. So we already mentioned. I already mentioned how. Um, Wealth was valued, um, and you can see that because of how ornate this is. The royalty was held in high esteem because they had all the power. Um, they were thought to be close, closer with God to, than them. Um, and this goes with what we were, what we were talking about in Macbeth, um, with like this kind of hierarchy, um, the, this, this chain, this power chain. So there's God, and then King, and then there's people. As opposed to, to God and then the people when the king is included with the people. The king was had to be closer to God. Um, and this like piece represents that because, like I said, it's such a, um, a well-done um, piece of armor. It, it's so, um, it would have been really expensive. Um, so you can definitely see that in this. But beyond uh, that, we can also see... Um, the value of valor and courage um, in battle. And really this is something that's, I mean, I think it's still even prevalent today. Um, it's, it's in terms of, like we, we guys, we associate, um, you know, macho men uh, playing sports, chopping down trees, um, doing all the yard work, which I think that's something, I don't think that's something anything, anything that will go away. It's going to be something that's going to be around for a long time. Um, we can see that in this because uh, this was used in tournament, tournaments and you didn't have women um, fighting in these tournaments um, that was that didn't happen uh, so the men competing in this um, and, but also um, I mean I, I don't really uh, have like any specific cases but um, you weren't um, it wasn't a convention to back down from one of these tournaments. If you entered these tournaments, you were um, gonna win or die or get injured trying. Like these are high speed horses hitting each other, bang. Like you could get maimed, you could have serious injury, um, and, and it was all about the victory. Um, England was, I mean, um, they weren't at the height of the power yet, um, but the Eng England was I mean, prosperous. Um, they they had a lot of uh, power at the time, um, and victory, like victory in battle, um, victory over your enemy, was valued, um, and that's why like, having this piece of armor made um, for these tournaments, um, it represents the value of, of combat, the value of valor in combat, um, the value of courage, uh, all that stuff, um, kind of bundled into to one thing. Um, so I guess if you kind of think about it, this armor specifically represents combat, um, whether it be in real battle, um, which I don't really know if this specifically made was, was made for real battle. Um, I think it was more made for, for tournaments, um, and, and so, or, or combat in these tournaments where, where you display, um, how great you are, how, how, if you, if you won these tournaments, you would be. Like rewarded with money, um, materials and stuff, show possessions, but you'd also like have there'd be a lot of esteem associated with it. Um, I mean, the king already held, held a lot of esteem, but um, just anyone in general who like fought and fought in these um, in these tournaments and succeeded, a lot of esteem was esteem was associated with that. Um, so, so you see the close link between. I mean, not necessarily manliness, but valor um, and all that. I feel like I'm kind of looping on this, but um, you see the close position with 
that and societal values at the time. Um, 